So, hey guys, I'm Anarul Gabor, but my name is Fashi. I am another web developer here at Arkham, and uh, I am a member of the core team. Uh, we mostly do under the hood developments. Uh, that's all internal, so nothing is really visible for the end users. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Well, I have a few open source contributions, not, none of them related to Node, but whatever. Uh, I'm about to tell you uh, about two projects that we did, and the first one is Price Change Logger, a uh, functional name, so you may guess what this does. Uh, under the hood, it uses the very same uh, messages from RabbitMQ that my colleague told you about. Uh, our problem was that we only had uh, listings current price, so we had absolutely no historical data and no way to show trends. Uh, and on the long run, we wanted to have a nice chart uh, about how a given adverts or listings price moved. This is a feature that uh, we are working on and we are already collecting data in production, but it's not complete yet. Our solution was a message to RabbitMQ from the two admin uh, systems that we have. And a new, this project uh, simply persists them all to Redis. It has a basic API, meaning uh, a single endpoint where you can query a given listing's price history. And this is what we will use uh, later on to create the chart. Uh, for me, coming from the PHP world, it was uh, amazing that we did all this in only 200 lines of code. We also have it unit tested. We use Jasmine for that. We have about 20 assertions for this project. The other one, uh, location server, another functional name. Our problem was that uh, we have three main product teams. Two admin pages where uh, users can modify or uh, post new listings. And one, uh, my colleague told you about called front end that uh, people looking for homes can use. They all use uh, location data in completely different formats. Uh, one was a big PHP class generated uh, periodic periodically, and the other two uses, uh, used database, uh, but in different formats, so that was nice. And it was a huge pain to keep them all in sync. Uh, our data source was MapsDB. Uh, colleague mentioned it. It's this huge location database, uh, really, really accurate. Uh, at the moment, it has over 150,000 different locations in many categories, uh, ranging from country all the way down to street, and even street numbers, or numbers with geolocations. And uh, it, uh, it is versioned, and right now, around 50,000 has changed since the last public version. Uh, our old way to keep the three teams in sync was a manual transfer. This was a four hour long and really error prone manual process. We wanted to, to change that. Uh, so our lead developer of the time created a basic prototype. It was in Node because it seemed like a high performing uh, tool. It had uh, just a few basic API endpoints that we needed to test it. It uh, had a proof of concept uh, way to load all those uh, locations, and uh, it was based on Backbone, uh, completely on the backend. So we, this is a completely backend application. We thought it, uh, we believed it's a good idea at the time. Uh, we had to modify our data source, to ma so MapsDB. Uh, we had, had to add explicit versioning. Uh, our location data were already versioned, but it was mostly done for an audit trail, so not uh, with this usage uh, in mind. And uh, also, we had to add no uh, notifications to RabbitMQ. So we, ha we created a new version model that our lead cartographer can create. See, she simply has to push a button, and uh, the rest is done automatically. Uh, development took... Uh, around two to three weeks, maybe a bit more, uh, for two developers. So it really was a small team. We used Express for our API. Uh, we have around 20 API endpoints, all for our get and impotent. 
so we used RabbitMQ and we also had to implement an old version loader. Uh, I mentioned that we had an audit trail, but nothing really like for real versioning, and that was a challenge too. Uh, this is our da data flow. Uh, this is a bit easier to understand than uh, while I'm talking. So when a location server instance starts, it uh, queries MapsDB to get what the current public version is. Then it uh, queries the database to load all the locations and then to get back the locations version at that time when the version was created. It's a bit complicated or sounds like a bit complicated but it, uh, in the end it's five SQL queries in total so really simple. And when uh, the data is loaded, it uh, closes my, the MySQL connection and serves purely from memory. It's really, really fast in the end. And whenever a new version is published, it uh, catches the event and loads the new data. I will talk about that uh, a bit later on. Our performance uh, in the beginning was uh, less than optimal. So back then we were using Backbone. On, on the server and we had no indexes. Uh, many of our queries did uh, logarithmic search or something like that and uh, we could serve around 20,000 requests every minute. It was not enough for our production purposes so we looked around how to optimize it. We found a Backbone indexing plugin or module or I'm not sure how Backbone calls it. Uh, simply including it and uh, some few lines of configuration, we almost doubled our performance, but still wasn't good enough. Our lead developer bit the bullet and uh, one Saturday he woke up and had a real idea, a real nice idea, and he rewrote our internal data storage completely. Uh, he dropped Backbone and instead we are now using uh, native JavaScript uh, arrays and objects and hashes and like. And right now we have around, we can serve around 120,000 requests every minute, with it, which is more than enough for our purposes. This is our live statistic, I believe. Uh, we use nodes cluster model. Uh, when you start location server, it uh, starts a main process and immediately starts a worker. We usually have a single worker at a time. Uh, this worker is uh, the one who listens on the ports and uh, loads data, keeps data in memory, serves it, etc. And whenever the master process receives a new version event from RabbitMQ, it forks a new worker and that worker loads the new data. And up until the very second uh, the version, new version cannot be published, uh, the new worker sits idle and in that second they switch places on the board. The old one stops listening and a new one starts. Uh, I did some benchmarks and uh, tests with uh, Siege and Apache Bench while developing this and uh, we didn't lose any requests. So concurrency of 10 million requests and uh, in the middle of that new version published. It was really nice and uh, a bit amazing to see that. I had two notable challenges. The first one was JavaScript's and Node's uh, async uh, nature. Uh, coming from the synchronous PHP world, it was uh, a bit hard to get around, but uh, in the end, uh, we solved that. And the other one was uh, the different JavaScript data structures. In PHP, you have array and that uh, access an array, a list, a hash, whatever you need. But uh, in JavaScript, you, you have all the different uh, types for that. Our final version is around 2,000 lines of code. And uh, for all the functionality it provides, it's still amazing. We have unit tests also in Jasmine. We have around 200 assertions for this. Uh, those run on every deploy. And this code has been uh, in production for about two months now. And works very nice. Any questions? How much is your actual load? Because you said that now you can serve more than 100,000, but compared to the real load, what's the real load? 
I'm, not, I'm really not sure about that. Uh, we are working on profiling at the moment, uh, profiling our location server instances, but I have no number at the moment. seemed like a good idea at the time. So <laughs> uh, we had Backbone model, I believe, and Backbone collection, and the two of them worked together really nicely up until we had over 100,000 records in it. Any more? Okay. Uh, Why are you keeping all this in the world? Because it's fast. Really, really fast. Uh, our slowest request is still under 10 milliseconds. Okay. But what we normally want to use for memory? Add more, mem more memory. So memory is cheap. <laughs> uh, a single worker uses around a bit less than 2 gigabytes of RAM. We have more than that. A lot more than that. Not fast enough. Not a requirement, but we really want to keep our site fast. And uh, uh, there are a few pages that do multiple requests. Uh, location data is right now not the bottleneck, but still we want it to keep it that way. version of location data in the front end code was a few thousand long, a few thousand lines long statically generated PHP class. Uh, it had a generated array in it uh, with all the location data from MapsDB and uh, it was stored in APC for performance. Uh, it was a pain to keep it up to date. Okay, any more? Okay, thank you guys.